Hello guys, this is Monchaloa here for a brief instructional video on something that I had to, you know, look at for myself, for my own tree. So I'm sure some of you will have family oral history that you need to verify, right? So for example, in my case, it was with my maternal grandfather, right? So my maternal grandfather, he's not on my birth certificate and he's not on my mother's birth certificate. The reason for that is because of, well, you know, human nature, family, <laughs> mess ups, uh, cheating, all that, right? So it was one of those cases. Uh, you know, life is what it is. So he wasn't on my birth certificate or my mother's, but, you know, my grandmother said, hey, that is your father. That was... Uh, that's your grandfather, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, well, my grandmother passed recently, unfortunately. Um, so I couldn't ask her more about this in particular. You know, I didn't have an interest in genealogy uh, several years ago. But uh, I talked to my aunt, right? And my aunt was get, able to give me some information that helped me narrow down and find my maternal grandfather, right? And, and be able to verify some of this oral history. But in addition to that, there was more that I did to really verify everything was correct, uh, as you will see. So first things first is, of course, you know, family members, can they lie about things? Yes, uh, of course. Is it likely? I would say probably not, because I didn't really doubt the fact that my grandmother would say that this guy was a my grandfather and my mom's father. I mean, why would she lie all her life? She just would not do that, right? So oral history is considered a primary source and it's considered very essential in genealogy. Uh, other people disagree. Um, I'm not one of those people. I think oral history can be very valid. Now, can it be prone to mistakes? Of course, just how anything can be. Just how a document can be full of mistakes. And I've seen many documents full of a lot of mistakes as I've done genealogy as a, you know, I have over a thousand people in my tree, but uh, well, what did my aunt tell me about Eluterio? Right. So she told me that he was from Pal uh, Palau Coahuila. Right. So I did find a birth record and this is when I was starting to look around for things. Right. I did find a birth record for Eluteria. Uh, Muskis, right? And she did say, hey, well, he was probably born in the 30s or 40s, but he could have been older. His birth record was for 1924. So that that made sense. You know, it wasn't 30s or 40s, but very plausible. Here, you will see that it says that he was from Palau, Coahuila. Now, this scanned document on ancestry is not the best, but if you go here on Family Search, you know, and I always recommend this if you have. Uh, trouble like just making out a document in general. Uh, go to Family Search and they'll have another source. Oh, uh, it's updating. Well, either way, I did have I did open up the Family Search version too, and it says Palau, and it's very very clear. So what what else did uh, I find out that made me certain I had the right Eluterio? Well, Eluterio Musquez is a really unique name for where I'm from. It's just not a common name at all. So like when these hints would pop up on ancestry and DNA, it was pretty much obviously this guy. <laughs> I just had to make sure it was. And now the birth thing alone wouldn't have been enough, but my aunt did tell me once I told her some things that I was finding out, like, you know, possible brothers that he could have had, etc. Well, she did tell me, Hey, I remember that his wife's name was Esther, Right. And again, they were married in Palau, Coahuila, which is where he's from. And I did find a marriage record for a um, Maria Esther Lopez. So it made complete sense uh, and it verified everything for me here. I was going to mention one other thing I forgot to mention in addition to the marriage with Maria Esther is one other memory that my aunt had. And that was that Eluterio would go visit his father in the United States, right, over in Texas. So his father, if you see, arrived in Eagle Pass, and I found the border card right here, right, um, with his wife, uh, Lisa Redondo. And he has a Social Security Claims Index from back then. 
where it lists my second great grandparents. So, and he's from Muscus Coahuila. So, as you can tell, that was just an extra little piece of evidence that makes it very compelling. So, that's three things total, again, to just reiterate. Uh, my grandfather would visit his father, my great grandfather, in Texas. Here's the Social Security Claims Index, the border card, and then, of course, the marriage lining with Maria Esther Lopez, and then the birth record from Palau, Coahuila. Unfortunately, my maternal grandfather did pass away in about 2000. That's when my uh, aunt said it was the case. So it's not like I could have ever just reached out to him anyways to, to make sure. This is not enough for some people. And I understand that. Right. So I took the extra time to really go into it. Uh, and what I did was the following. I'll show you real fast. So what I, what I did was the following here. On my DNA matches, if you just sort it by Mooskies, you'll see that a lot of Mooskies people show up, and very, very recent. Second and third cousin is considerably recent, especially with the 162 CM. It's pretty recent. Uh, for you guys to get kind of an idea of what that would mean, let me just go to this. Let me just go to this uh, chart thing here that I always pull up. Of course, the moment I actually need it today, it's not pulling up. But essentially, it goes somewhat like this, right? And that's where a second cousin would be. Here's what a third cousin would be. So, so that's what I wanted to show. So a lot of these dots were connecting, but I went the extra mile on top of this, right? So I went the extra mile. And I started looking at DNA matches like this guy. He, uh, you know, Rodolfo Ortiz, and this is a public profile, so it's fine. But um, let's see, he is a fourth to sixth cousin. Excellent, right? So if you look at his tree and you look at mine, right? Because I, I went ahead and just did the genealogy for Eliterio because I, again, all everything lining up, it was pretty clear to me, hey, this is the right guy. And so I started doing the genealogy. Well, if you look at his, he has Enrique Musquez Adalpe, right? That is a brother to my great grandfather. And then he has Francisco Musquez Urio and Mar Maria Dolores Adalpe. We go over here for my people, right? And you'll find the same thing here Francisco Musquez. Maria Dolores Adalpe, which are my second great grandparents. If you go to Eluterio Adalpe, right here, which is the father of my grandfather under his siblings, I did find an Enrique and I have documentation for that, which matches again from Palau, which matches everything from that alternate tree. And we have a DNA connection. All right. So, you know, people can just be like, oh, well, that, that was, that's a one off. Like, it doesn't even matter. Like, you're probably related somewhere else. Um, and I disagree strongly with that, but we'll continue. Here is another DNA match I'll show you guys really fast. Uh, and she is four to six cousins, same thing, right? So here we go. She has Enrique Musquiz, which again, that would be a great grand uncle with Consuela Zapata. Well, same thing over here. Consuela, when misspelled Zapata. So it's the same guy, right? Uh, so that's two people now. And again, we could, she doesn't have them added to her tree, but I mean, it's, it's very obvious who her parents are. She just doesn't, she just didn't bother to trace it. Uh, it we share the same second grand grandparents like me and Rodolfo do. So that's two people, right? I'm just going to close these out. So it's not as cluttered. So then we go over here to uh, another, uh, per another match, right? So, so Hilda Estela Ramos Muskis, third or fifth cousin, right? 29.7 cm. So this is her tree. She has Rafael Muskis and father is Francisco Muskis. Martina Muskis is the uh, grandmother. I don't share that, right? So I have Anastasia Urio, but I still have the Francisco Muskis like how she does. And um, this guy, you know, my third good grandfather had multiple wives. I have Martina Muskis over here, 
right? And um, it's completely valid. So we share a third great grandfather, and that's where we have our DNA connection. There's no over here. There's nothing else that we would share. And then right here, which you'll find interesting, is another person, uh, David Garcia. I have a DNA connection with, right? So David Garcia, what do we share? We share 17 cm, fifth to eighth cousin. Makes sense. Rafael Muski is just like the other woman. Rafael Muskis, right? And same 1841, third great grandfather. Right here, she doesn't have uh, the year he was born, but I have it because I did the genealogy. So that's four people, right? So you, you're seeing the trees, the connections, right? And so here is just another side of the tree. And I have way more, but I didn't want to make this video terribly long, so I'm not going to bother. But Jose Luis Garza, he's fifth to eighth cousin, right? Cool. So uh, wh where do we meet? Well, he has Miguel Adalpa born in 1817. And then Lucas Adalpe and Teresa. Well, he has uh, Jesus Sulaika Galindo, right? But it's so it's Teresa. Um, she has the same parents I have over here. So Miguel Adalpe, eighteen seventeen. So we share again the same third great grandfather and the same fourth and everything after that. And uh, I got the next step in that tree. So Joaquin, and then I don't know why he doesn't have the mother. I mean, it's not that hard to find. Uh, then I haven't bothered to ask to add her father, but again, Galindo, Nicolasa Galindo. So I haven't just, I need to still work further on the tree, but we, we share that third great grandfather. So that's five people, right? And one is not even on the moose kids line. It's just uh, over here splitting with my second great grandmother over here on this side rather than over here. But it's very, very clear that, uh, this is where we're related. One thing that's interesting that I'll also show you guys really, really fast is through lines on Ancestry DNA. Because through lines can also really help you, especially if you have a very well-built tree. Uh, for example, here is Francisco Muscas, my second great-grandfather, and it says five DNA matches. So I click on this, right? And through lines will tell you where. So there, that's my brother on here, right? But over here is Maria de Los Angeles Barragan Zapata. I actually talked to her, and um, she told me, hey, yeah, my great-grandmother was Elvira Musquez. Well, that's the brother to my uh, great-grandfather. Or that's the <laughs> – my bad. I'm getting tongue-tied. That's the si sister to my great-grandfather, Eluterio, who share the same second-great-grandparents. And it worked out because I reached out and I asked her because she didn't have her tree developed that far. Same thing over here. This is, I just showed you guys these two people, right? And it's and even Ancestry DNA itself is saying, hey, these through lines, this is what you guys share, right? Even if you go to their profile, I'll, I'll revisit this. It'll say right here, hey, what, what is your common ancestors? Francisco and Musquez and Maria Dolores Adalpe. So that's how I was able to, you know, without a doubt, verify my family oral history. You know, there's a fact of my aunt telling me, hey, you know, he was born in Palau, Coahuila, you know, somewhere in the 30s, 40s, or if not, he was older. He had a wife named uh, Esther Lopez, and she recognized the name when I showed her the document and everything. She's like, yeah, I remember the, I remember the name. So that was enough to verify, hey, yeah, this is the correct guy. They knew who he was, so bam. And then again, with all those DNA connections – the common ancestors in the trees, it leaves it without doubt. And that wasn't even everything. I have a whole document here where I talk about the oral history right there. And then I have about 11 people that uh, would derive only from my maternal grandfather that I found DNA matches with the same DNA ancestors on the tree, right? That I, that we have. And then, um, yeah, this was just some other thing. So um, this is the line where I have that the famous Texas governor, right? Uh, I have him all the way over here. I believe he is over here. Oh, no, it's right here. Yeah, here we go. So he's over, all the way over here. This is the, that uh, Coahuila and Te Texas governor. So I was wanting to you know, even more uh, verify this because the genealogy is very solid. The only weak point was oh, I got to verify the oral history. Well, I did, you know, with the DNA matches and everything. But um, I ran into a descendant um, 
of Santiago Vidayuri, which was the nephew of Francisco right here, right? And so her and her, uh, it was this woman named Rachel, uh, and she had the Jed Mad Kish for her father and for her cousin, and I matched uh, them as well. We had identical uh, snips, like some snips, like 51 on average between us, the three of us, uh, each one. So, and uh, it doesn't say it there, but I know when I ran it, it was saying five generations back, which makes sense, or uh, around five generations that we would more likely just share six great grandparents, given the fact that their direct ancestor ancestor would be the brother to Francisco with the Yuri. So yeah, all that combined allowed me to you know, be like, yeah, <laughs> without a doubt, I prove my family oral history. So that's what I recommend with people. So if you have that family oral history, you know, you, you have, uh, try to identify the ancestor with the details that you were given on, you know, here on the site, try to find a birth record, marriage record, anything like that, that would now allow you to start doing the paper trail, then start tracing their lines. Now this, can this be a risk? Because could it all be for nothing? Of course, right? But you got to be willing to take that risk to really know because unless you have a really recent ancestor that's just going to be like uh, or, or a relative now that's going to have a really strong DNA connection, you're, you're not really going to know because most people are not going to be able to tell you like if there's is, is there a second, third cousin, they're not, not going to be able to be, like, be able to really definitively tell you where, where the hell you guys meet up like unless you already have some prior knowledge of how far your tree goes. And so that's why I did this. And that's why even reaching out to some people that didn't even have a tree developed, I was able to figure out, Hey, this is where we connect at. And this is what this proves without, without a doubt that this is my paternal grandfather. Some people won't respond. Uh, I hope these two uh, people do respond to these two music because they're like the strongest, closest relation I have uh, hopefully in time, but you know, it is without a doubt proved. And those are just some of the techniques again, just, you know, uh, establish the paper trail from the oral history, trace the paper, paper trail, start looking at uh, your DNA matches and their trees, and you'll be able to know for a fact, hey, yeah, my family was right. <laughs> so that is my advice to you guys. I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about my research. That was just some of it I was trying to not take forever for you guys. Well, thank you again.